from the Penn Libraries. So, hi Sarah. Hi Jamie. <laughs> nice to see you again. You as well. So we're sitting here in the new library video and photo production studio and we're here to talk about your work as what exactly is your title? I am the uh, person with one of the longest titles in the library. <laughs> I am the Communications, Marketing, and Social Media Coordinator at the Penn Libraries. Right, and this is a follow-up interview to a blog post that we worked yes. on together mm -hmm. um, a month or so ago, talking about how you came to be at the libraries yes. and what your interests are um, academically and professionally and how that has led to you um, being very skilled at communicating with library patrons on the internet. Yes. <laughs> so um, I followed that in-person interview up with a series of questions. Okay. And I think it would be great for our audience to be able to see us have a short conversation about um, your work and great. Um, interact with us that way. So do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Okay, wonderful. How do you, as a library staff person, use social media personally and professionally? So professionally, it's a third of my job, right? As I listed out, I am the communications, marketing, and social media coordinator. So anytime you are following a library's institutional accounts at UPennLIB or the Penn Libraries on Facebook, that's me. <laughs> uh, it is my original content. Um, I often do get content from other people uh, across our library system, but it is mainly Sarah Levin's generated and definitely curated content. That's really exciting. How many accounts total do the Penn Libraries have that the, you are managing? The Penn Libraries has uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook currently. So across platform, yes. basically management. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's exciting. In my opinion, um, social media has changed drastically over the last five years and has become more commonly accept accepted as a professional tool in the academy. Would you share that opinion? And if so, um, what are some pointers you can give to library patient patrons looking to up their social media clout? I definitely agree. Yes, uh, social media is huge. Everyone is on it. Your boss is on it. Um, your <laughs> the institution that you may be applying for a job, the company that you might be applying for a job at, have a social media presence, people in charge, a team, et cetera, et cetera. I think LinkedIn is so important. Mm -hmm. um, that okay. was and that was something that I learned coming into this all. Um, you know, I knew that I needed to have a profile. Um, but I didn't know about the wild world of LinkedIn, how, how much you can glean from their resources. Um, the Penn Libraries has a license with lynda.com, mm -hmm. which is part of LinkedIn, um, where you can get certifications and just generally learn more about skills that will help you excel at your job. That was huge for me. Um, there are a lot of things that pop up, programs that I need to learn, social media platforms I need to familiarize myself Absolutely. with. Um, there are videos <laughs> of Lindsay on, on LinkedIn. Um, definitely uh, having a basic LinkedIn profile is important. Uh, the Penn Libraries also provides for students uh, and I would assume interested faculty photo shoots even. Mm -hmm. Um, in our spaces, so we can help you get uh, linked up with LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So. LinkedIn, you should clearly um, consider, go. you know, involving Sarah in your pro promotional videos. Marketing yeah. <laughs> is a third of, of my responsibility. <laughs> um, there, there are a couple things that you mentioned just to wander off from the questions for a mm -hmm. second that really um, resonated with me. One is that, you know, social media and technology in general is changing so rapidly that even when you um, are lucky enough to get, you know, a job that is focused on social media or one third on social media, mm -hmm. um, from the day to day things are changing and you, the skill set that you started with may not be the skill set that you need a year into the job. Yeah. And I think that that's something that um, the academy is starting to embrace more because I think as you know, millennials and younger students are in school, there aren't really um, institutionalized classes to learn how to do technology yeah. in a way that like maybe our parents' generation had where like they could go learn how to program by like actually using a punch card and programming. That's not really sure. what we do anymore. So I think you touch on, on some really important resources that the library has is sort of like an additional backup to regular coursework. Um, I know I personally, when I was an undergrad and now in grad school, 
really love my classes, my coursework for the theoretical background and learning how to be a good writer. Um, I'm a communications, you know, master's person now, but like an English undergrad, but, mm -hmm. but it didn't teach me how to create media in the way that we need to create media Absolutely. <laughs> these days. And things like lynda.com and being online and just like being exposed and around media helps, I think, change your um, idea of what reading and writing is and what media is Absolutely. Um, in the online space. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's so important that you know, you're know you here and your work at, at the library is a resource because more and more I think students are going to be looking outside of the traditional curriculum for exposure to different kinds of reading and writing and media that they may not be able to learn within the classroom. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, as we continue <coughs> to hire interns who are interested in the same things that you are, librarians who've been immersed in this culture, we'll have the workshops, we have the studio, we have the lab space in the libraries, and we're prepped to support any Endeavor students, faculty, are interested in doing. Yeah, I have to say, I've been at the libraries as an intern for, um, this is my third year, and it's really been a supplemental space, but it's really become a home for all of my intellectual work because the classroom is a wonderful space to get the information you need for your, um, the foundation of what you do. But then when you're really in like the thesis mode and you're trying to create and create and like innovate, the libraries I found, especially the Penn Libraries, has been such a warm and welcoming space. And I think that that's a deliberate choice, you know, their different libraries have different feels to them, and personally, I love celebrating this space because I feel like it's very student focused and student centric, and it's almost like a lab, like it, you, it's an ideal lab. Yeah. And um, I've been in other university libraries and haven't had the same feeling, so I know that that's intentional. Do you bring, and this is again an aside, but do you bring the same kind of curation ideas, curatorial ideas, to the voice that you're curating on social media for the libraries? Like, what sort of words or adjectives would you hope people would feel about the voice that you're using on social media? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I have a background in creative writing. I have a Master of Fine Arts degree in creative writing. It's something that I'm very well studied in. Um, I did not get a Master of Fine Arts in social media. Right? <laughs> I don't, does that exist? So, I don't know if that exists yet. No, <laughs> uh, but, that's, uh, but thinking about medium, thinking about rhetoric, thinking about voice, mm -hmm. obviously thinking about storytelling is something that comes very natural to me given my background. Um, but this is this is a whole new world um you know social media for me as a millennial not a digital native um was something that was wondrous uh mm -hmm. something Absolutely. very new mm -hmm. um something fundamental to those teenage years where your hormones Same. are everywhere <laughs> and you're just you fa you have this platform where people can find what you want to say and you and know all of a sudden your voice becomes important oh for absolutely the first time. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's a it's a trip um for lack of a better word um to think that this is a pro profession absolutely. a professional pursuit um but i think that you know i i've been able to adapt because of to this very easily because of where it's you know where i fall in those generation hmm in the generational timeline. Um, but I, I just have to say that, you know, the, the library is the best place for the, these, this merger between, um, you know, tech, what you were talking about. Yeah, what? like the text as in like Shakespeare and Dante. And yeah. The, like the canon and like learning how to read and write like in a traditional context. Well, I think And what, then also like creating new kinds of media. Yeah. Using those, because you do need those fundamental skills like you mentioned your better Absolutely. background and your creative writing background. Mm -hmm. Like you can't skip that step in terms of like if you're interested in being a good communicator, there are still like core key keystones to how mm -hmm. to do that. But I think once you have taken those very important courses, you can then like riff on that sort of yeah. a library space becomes for me anyway, like a lab where you can, you know, put those skills to practice and trying new forms of media like going on LinkedIn and writing an influencer post mm -hmm. or creating a short video like we're doing Absolutely. right now. <laughs> I th but I also think that something uh, people forget 
when they think about libraries is uh, it's not a museum for books. You know, right. we, we did have some, we did have scientific textbooks. We do have scientific textbooks um, in our spaces. I think people tend to think of the libraries as just a human a gathering place for humanities mm. people. Um, librarians get a master of information science. It's it's inherent that we, you know support this kind of information. Librarians know about information, curation, the future of um, the digital space. Yeah, and, and that was really surprising to me as a student. I sort of always, I'm guilty of that stereotype, of like, oh, you know, walk into the library and the mean librarian will shush you if you're too loud, and yeah. that's the exact opposite of, of how Penn is in terms of its library space. Okay, so <clears throat> speaking of all of the newness around social media, um, what challenges and obstacles have you worked through as an information services professional with regard to social media? I would say um, just the idea of l less is more. So being editorial about our social media presence. Mm -hmm. There was a time when people realized that they needed to be communicating on social media platforms and I think this happened across the board not just in library spaces just in the general institutional professional company world where people were like we need to get on social media and we need to get on social media fast. It was sort of like this gold rush like everyone just wanted an account and yes. like they looked for the nearest young person they're like you yep. you know yes. this get <laughs> Resident on Resident millennial you are here you know you were <laughs> intern at, at the time as an intern an unpaid intern you here. Um, yeah and now I think that every you know the world of institutional professional company social media have these account accounts are established mm -hmm. um, and now it's time to be editorial. So when I came into this job, the Penn Libraries had many, 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 many accounts across our vast library system. Um, everybody got on Facebook in earnest and there were many accounts that were neglected or possibly unnecessary and tracking those accounts down figuring out, you know, do what what does this presence need to look like for this library, for this unit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so being editorial about the social media pro uh, presence um, for the Penn Libraries was a challenge. It was a fun challenge. Uh, it required getting to know lots and lots of people in the library system, which is not something everybody who works here can say that they've done. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had a meeting with, app, multiple meetings with absolutely every department head in our libraries. Um, so got that face time in. <laughs> so I, I feel like after meeting with these people, I have a really good idea of um, the personality of the Penn Libraries, so the entire system. So after I got got that, it became a lot easier to refine who we are, to kind of get down to that core um, necessity social media presences. So we do have more accounts than just the institutional Penn Libraries. I encourage you all to uh, go through Twitter, go through Facebook, Instagram, find us all. <laughs> um, uh, they, you, you can start by seeing who we follow. Um, but uh, yeah, we've, we've gotten a, a tighter, a tighter ship and it's, and it's good. It's exciting. Remind us when you started at the, at the Penn Library? I started two years ago. Okay, so and how long would you say it took you to wrangle all of the accounts? In? I know you're not, it's an ongoing project. It's an ongoing project. I would say about a year and a half in. So it's been about six months where you I felt sort of more at the at the mass, yeah, at the head of absolutely. The, steering the social it, media. Or, organized. <laughs> wow, and that's, you know, going back, um, how old would you say some of the older social media accounts were that you found? Mm, I would say things got started in 07, and I would assume you're going to talk to Dorothy, and maybe she corrects me on that, but I think 08, 07. So that's, a, you know, eight years of social media that you had to put under an umbrella, yeah. and it's fascinating. It's a lot of hard work, guys. <laughs> it's not just writing witty tweets. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what is the next big need in social media literacy? If you could imbue Penn students, we have to use our GRE words, Imbue Penn students, faculty, and staff with one tidbit of knowledge about social media, what would it be? I think that it would be uh, 
learning more about video production. Uh, and feeling check. more feeling more <laughs> comfortable on camera, which is something that I'm trying to learn and behind a camera. Yes. Um, and I and I hate to be a constant promotion machine, but the area that we're in right now is a really great place to start. Um, the library has great great technology. Absolutely. Um, and, and resources, yes. just amazing resources. Yeah, that are not frequently talked about beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the books. And it's like, the books are wonderful, but we can create these new, you know, scripts and texts using different kinds of media. And I think, I, I love books. I'll never, I work in publishing, so books are holy. But we also need to figure out how to communicate and get our story out there to a broader audience. And I think we're finding, at least I'm finding more and more that our attention span on the internet is shorter and shorter when it comes to long blocks of text. So it's really helpful to have multimedia along with your long blocks of beautiful prose <laughs> to get your ideas out there. And we have gorgeous video content on our social of video orientations to books, right? Um, so just bringing the past, present, and future together, um, that's kind of what we're all about. Really library. Nice. So, um, like I said, plug for this new uh, library video uh, production studio. Uh, we can do audio, we can do photo, um, and video in this room. Um, we have, we're fully equipped with Site Deck, um, and we also have fabulous, fabulous people working for us in the Vitali Digital Media Lab. Just downstairs, so we're on the third floor of Van Felt Dietrich Library Center right now. Um, the Vitali Digital Media Lab is on the first floor of Van Pelt Dietrich Library Center. So I suggest that everybody goes and checks us out. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all, Sarah, that yes. we have today. But it thank was you great so much, Seeing you guys on the internet, and thank you for coming to chat with me. Absolutely. Great.